23rd August, Chandrayaan 3's Vikram lander made a successful soft landing on the south pole of the moon. This was a very big achievement. Yes, it made all of us very proud. If you remember, we met someone special on that day, right? You have sent us multiple questions to ask from him within a matter of hours. We had hundreds of questions. And yes, today is the day we are going to meet him and ask those questions directly. Questions are yours. I'll just be asking. Please welcome Basu Dubey, sir. Thank you for having me here. Thank you, sir, for taking time out of your busy schedule. And Saturdays, sir, Saturdays not that, that busy, I can say. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me tell you all. You have done your bachelor's in avionics from Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, Trivandrum. Then you worked for 11 years in ISRO. 12 to be exact. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And then you also did your master's from UK. Yes, I did. Ooh, that's that's a very long career, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a series of happenstances. But if I if I uh, look at this, any student, they would feel like, were you always so curious in space, aerospace, engineering? Is no, not really. <laughs> so it's not like um, I, I chose this career starting from the very beginning, like when I was studying 9th or 10th. I had almost as little knowledge as anyone would have about the space. And even rightly so, because it was not covered that uh, hugely in those days. But yes, uh, I had a flair for mathematics and physics, which uh, took me to a career path when I went to Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, did my bachelor's in avionics and then on worked for ISRO for so many years. So so it has been quite a pleasant journey and my flair for the engineering part of it has kept me there. Ooh, maths and science, that's a cue for all of you. Huh? Yeah. All right, sir. I won't watch for chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, I, it's just it's just a joke. But yeah, everything is really important. I was not that great at it, which is why I mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> sir, Chandrayaan 3 has landed. Proud moment. And I know on that day, you had a celebration. So you could only give us 5-10 minutes. Yeah. And today, nice that you are here. Our students, they sent us hundreds of questions. And in a matter of hours, if I tell you the truth. So, uh, I have picked up a few questions. The first question is about Chandrayaan 3. About I mean, Chandrayaan 2 was a partial success. Chandrayaan 3 is a complete success. I mean, soft landing is successful. What are exactly the changes that we did? I mean, how did he make sure that it doesn't fail this time? Because Luna 25, it crashed around two days before. So when you talk about such missions, uh, landing on the moon surface, it's a great engineering problem to tackle. And uh, that's what we faced during the Chandrayaan 2. So uh, we had the plans of orbiting around the moon and ejecting the lander and land it safely onto the moon, which could not happen because of, uh, you can say, some desi design margins that we had. Now, once we have learned that with the with the unsuccessful landing attempt, we have uh, improved on the design margins this time. The control controllability was improved. The landing site was improved. So I think whatever mistakes we did last time, we made sure we don't do it again. Yeah, we, we, we should cover for all the mistakes that we know. And uh, going forward, even, even a successful mission would tell you so many things about uh, uh, how we can improve on, on one mission to the other. Alright, so Basu sir, the next question is about the path of Chandrayaan 3. Because we explained the students that Chandrayaan 3 saved a lot of fuel and India is actually doing a pretty great job in this. Okay. Mangalyan also, we managed to keep the cost so low. But how exactly do we fire thrusters at intermittent points so that fuel usage is very less? So I, as Indians, you would know we are uh, always fuel economic. <laughs> we want to. <laughs> Basically, depends on what, what you want to achieve with the mission. So, as you would know that uh, this uh, mission is only for orbiting around the moon and then landing on a particular site. It was only designed uh, with a date in mind, which is the date of landing. And then uh, working back the schedule on which we should launch in order to achieve that date. So, this leaves us with the luxury that we must put it into an orbit around the Earth uh, where uh, you you can use the the propulsion module on board the spacecraft to raise it into the Earth on the Earth orbit and then uh, take a slingshot to the Moon. So this saves a lot of fuel. It takes a longer time, but it is affordable. So every time we are 
at this perigee point near the earth we fire thrusters yeah. and keep raising the orbit yeah. finally taking a slingshot yeah. then reaching <laughs> the moon and applying brakes absolutely so in this not relying solely on your fire power you are using gravity also as your friend yes yes there's a uh, interesting concept of gravity assist as well so probably whoever is interested would uh, learn about it so you use the gravity for changing your uh, directions of velocities yes i think you got your answer to the question why it is taking 40 days to reach the moon to save fuel and money so vasu sir next question as far as i remember this is a student from a lower grade but it's a very nice beautiful question a very cute question so that's why i took it we are doing so many moon missions do you really see us living on the moon in future oh, it's a far fetched dream <laughs> for now you can enjoy watching the movies <laughs> uh, but yes uh, it is definitely possible but you have to create a earth like habitable environment for the astronauts to visit and stay there for a longer time the whole space community uh, indian and global space community is uh, really putting their foot forward and trying to achieve the required technologies that would be required to inhabit the surface of the moon or the surface of the mars so we are on path but it is going to take a long time next question was about uh, what if we take chips packet on the- hey it is burst come on yeah. we have discussed this <laughs> According to you, in the most simple words, what is the objective of Chandrayaan three? In the first mission of Chandrayaan series, that was Chandrayaan one, we detected water molecules, and it was a huge discovery. Um, so, uh, to follow up on that, we, of course, all the uh, space agencies got interested into knowing more. knowing better the moon surface so in chandrayaan 3 we are attempting it again to land on the south region uh, which is the area of interest uh, where we are going to probe a few things do the spectrometry spectroscopy and find out what is in there for us it's all about finding water on the moon it can be and other other, other elements things. as well and the, the reason i asked you this question first is because there's a follow up question which is what would happen if you drink water present on the moon <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure what would happen, but there are no attempts currently. I guess I'm sure. <laughs> Students are asking. Chandrayaan two may we had an orbiter, hmm. and this time we are saying it's not an orbiter. It's called a propulsion module, but still it's going to orbit. So, yeah. what is the difference between like an orbiter, propulsion module? Because both are orbiting. Yeah, true. Both are orbiting, uh, but uh, in Chandrayaan two, uh, the orbiter had payloads on it, which is actually functional and uh, giving you a desired functionality of imaging the moon surface or where the lander is going, so you can image it, which we did successfully with the orbiter of the Chandrayaan two. For this mission, since the orbiter two already had a life in orbiting uh, the moon, we did not really have a functionality to be done by another orbiter. So we replaced this module with a propulsion module, which is required to take you. Uh, through the burns that it takes you to the moon's orbit first it is going to orbit uh, near the moon's region but it is not having any desired functionality which is why it is not technically termed as an orbiter it will be called just a propulsion module that takes you from one place to the other so its main job was to propel to propel the, the module the vikram lander exactly wow yeah. oh. nice sir one more question for the chandrayaan 3 mission we are saying that it has a mission life of 14 days which is one lunar day but why only 14 days so it's basically designed to make use of these 14 days so we landed on 23rd august because we can make use of the length of the whole lunar day so it is sunlight you can have the required energy to go through these 14 days also the temperatures in the colder region than in the sunlit region at the moon surface are extremely uh, varying when you talk about the space systems they are not really designed to withstand such cold temperatures when they are not uh, receiving any energy so there are two ways to go about it uh, use a constant source of energy that can power your electronics all the time and keep it hot or just use the available time at hands so we have we are we are confident that within these 14 days we can accomplish the objectives of this mission if i'm not wrong so the the rover is going to come out take a nice sun bath then go back yeah <laughs> yeah of course that is 
that is the idea so it is going to be sunlit all the time that it is uh, required to be functional of course there is again a possibility that even after uh, getting through the colder days uh, it can still function but it is only a chance so let's see let's hope for the best so i think that's a very interesting information that we learned right so the rover will go out take this energy come back but it won't be working throughout its Bond. duration in the in the colder region yeah. so it'll come out go back come out go back right yeah. so looking at this this next question no i feel very proud sometimes uh, because this question gets me to understand that how much aware of our today's students are with everything that's happening in space exploration this next question is about aditya l1 so uh, a student has asked aditya l1 is being launched to study the sun but why interesting question of course students are really very aware these days much better than the situation that we had aditya l1 of course is a mission to the sun um, we are going to send a spacecraft to a l1 point of the earth sun system and uh, observe the uh, sun's activities at its peak you have coronal mass ejection phenomena happening and uh, you have uh, those payloads which are going to observe those activities for us uh, more than this i am also not aware <laughs> my wife works uh, for aditya l1 mission so probably you can have her next time and oh. ask all the technical <laughs> questions to her so we know whom to approach next time <laughs> nice so nowadays people have watched so many movies and sci-fi movies are, are a hit so one student has asked is teleportation and wormhole possible to open a gate for parallel universe I'm bold. I'm not <laughs> sure how to answer that question, but yeah, it's good for the sci-fi movies. Uh, but I'm really not sure how to, how to answer that. <laughs> so the next question is very interesting for you. How is ISRO preparing to send humans for space exploration? That is Moon or Mars missions. Yeah, that is something that is uh, my domain. Uh, I've been working at a Human Space Flight Center, which was formed recently. Yes, I'm working on the missions, uh, which is called Gaganyaan mission, which is aimed at uh, sending. humans into space and bringing them back safely so india has undertaken this program even uh, since the days olden days of 2014 i guess where we had the first mission which was called the care mission crew module atmospheric reentry so that was demonstrating the capability of reentering into the atmosphere and then we had another uh, mission called the pad abort test uh, and then on uh, we have uh, established a whole road map all the milestones you can say to achieve the technological prowess in order to undertake a safe human space flight Yes, we are on path and uh, we are uh, looking forward to sending humans into space from the Indian soil very soon. That's nice. And uh time would be crucial in this because now Yeah, yeah this this time. this kind of mission really cannot be you cannot look at it from a perspective of making it cost effective it uh, the time is crucial because there can be exigencies there can be unforeseen circumstances where you have to abort the mission and bring back the crew safely so these are these missions are designed to be more robust and more reliable and, uh, and nothing can go wrong that's a It's a very tough job, sir. All the best for <laughs> Gaganyaan. Thank you so much. Next question asks us that now it is we hear about so many different different companies which we never used to hear before, which are going for space explorations, like private companies. We hear of SpaceX. We have so many startups in India who are working for uh, rocket buildings. So this question says, how can India be a major player in? private owned and funded space programs and so much competition is emerging so the space field uh, is going through a disruption you can say and it has emerged as a really lucrative field right now among all the all the nations so majorly we had only us russia china japan india working in the space sector so far but now all the other nations are also uh, trying to build their own prowess their own uh, self sufficiency Uh, in the space sector and the private industries are playing the major part in it and uh, so is uh, the case with india as well that all our private players are really stepping up uh, although it's a nascent stage right now but uh, this is also the right time to take that uh, step forward and uh, build the private space economy in india as well really exciting times ahead especially for india because we really have that skill and experience and with the hand holding of isro it is really going to be a, a, a nice journey for them and i think uh for students it's a very good thing which will let you know in time <laughs> next question says moon's gravity is lesser than earth so do we have time difference like time time dilation over there does time run faster on on moon uh yes the technical answer is yes because uh 
Okay, it is pertaining to a domain which is uh, a little different from the from the domain of uh, space technology that we work on. So when you design even the trajectories or you design the orbits, uh, you only stick to the Newtonian physics. So my suggestion would be just to uh, stick to the basics and learn the Newtonian physics better, even in order to take a space flight. So going into the realm of uh, theory of relativity is a little too wild for uh, the young kids to take up right now. But the technical answer is yes. But I think the best thing all of you can learn from Sir's answer is we are doing so many exploration missions, the moon missions and Newtonian physics is the biggest help, right? Absolutely. The basis of all these missions are only Newtonian physics. And you are learning that. So <laughs> learn it well. This next question says, Sir, I am in 10th grade. I want to become a space scientist. But I don't know anything about space. Where should I start? And this is a question many students have asked. How would you like to answer it? So when I was in 10th standard, even I didn't know many things about space. So that's a good starter, I guess. It's just that you have to have that sustained interest in the field if you really want to make a career out of it. And of course, maths and size are the tools that uh, will will take you forward. So keep your interest high and pursue that career. All the best to you. <laughs> so maths and science, extremely important. But I think that now it's when you kind of joined the field, it was very uh, tough. I mean, in a way, it was it was tough because you had one particular path, J advanced. Now it's not like J advanced is the only way. You have different different ways of reaching. It. Yeah, IIT J was the one that I gave in 2007. That's when also the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology uh, started. So I'm the first batch from IAST. Wow. Yeah, and uh, this this college uh, continues to be there. So this is one way that you can get an admission into Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology. Uh, but uh, this is not the only way, of course. Uh, earlier in olden days, before I think IST was there, there was only one national exam that used to take place. Now there are multiple ways. So there are national exams that are happening every year. There are um, there are students from IST that are coming in. There are uh, campus recruitments from uh, various colleges all across India, IITs, NITs, even other colleges. That's good news. And as the private industry is emerging, I think that's a very yeah, good thing. Yeah, even even the, that uh, that is going to unlock a, a huge area, huge potential. The next question is, also, is actually also very, very important. And I would understand why, because in classes, we get this choice of either going for math, so you are an engineer, if you go for bio, you are a doctor, but you know, mm -mm, both are different. So this is a nice question. The uh, student asks, sir, I want to become a doctor, but can I also go into aerospace field? Of course. So uh, there is a whole area that that deals with uh, the human space flight uh, biotics, human space flight physiology and also the neural factors, biomedicine, astro astrobiomedicine. So so there are many fields in which the doctors are really involved because uh, the health of uh, humans or the crew that go into space has to be uh, kept in order. We have examples of many doctors who are part of the space field and they continue to be there for the mostly the human space flight missions. So that's a good career there. Nice. So I think don't worry. If you like to become a doctor, be a doctor. But it's not like you'll go away from the aerospace field. This was a beautiful conversation. I mean, I learned a lot. Our students learned a lot. And we had a very good time. Thank you for joining Thank us you. today. Thank you. And students, I hope you got all your answers because this doesn't happen very often. No? We get first-hand experience from a real scientist working in it. So I hope you are more amazed with this space industry and you would want to pursue it because yes, we would love to see you all of them. All right, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me here. And it's a pleasure talking to all the kids. All the best to all of them for their future. Thank you.